hello everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome to this book tropes recommendation video i thought i would draw my brain for the most common book tropes that i have come across and compile a list of books that i think fit the trope perfectly and it's taken me some time and i've compiled my brain and i've come up with a great list that i think you're gonna love so buckle in get yourself a hot drink and let's get into it First up is the trope of the love triangle and I'm not sure if I love, I hate, I don't know where I stand on it. I think it all depends on how the author does it. So say for something like The Hunger Games, brilliant, it's well done with Peter and Gail, I love that. Uh, we've got the inheritance game with the two brothers, kind of odd and weird and a bit uncomfortable because of the morals. And then we have the top one that I could think of where I think it's done perfectly even if there are the moral kind of issues that i have with it and that is every summer after where we have persephone and she goes home and she becomes embroiled in two brothers and we kind of get these flashbacks to her childhood where she was embroiled in it and it's one of those books where you kind of just you kind of forget that there is this love triangle so i feel like it's done well but let me read you the blurb they say you can never go home again and for Persephone Fraser that has felt too true for the last decade. Ever since she made the biggest mistake of her life, instead of glittering summers on the lakeshore of her childhood, she spends them in a stylish apartment in the city until the day she gets a call that sends her racing back to Barry's Bay and into the orbit of Sam Florek. For five summers through hazy afternoons on the water and warm summer nights working in his family restaurant, Percy and Sam had been inseparable and slowly that friendship turned into something breathtakingly more before it fell spectacularly apart. I love this book and I read it I believe the end of August and there was a massive hype around it and it was one of those books that was so like it really got your heartstrings but it definitely raised a few eyebrows on book top book talk and book tube when people were like hang on a second she came between two brothers um hence the love triangle trope the next trope that was super common in my brain was the workplace kind of hatred and how that is used in the romance genre specifically between two characters who absolutely despise each other there's some competitiveness going on and in the end romance sparks and through that anger comes love and passion and all things that I don't particularly enjoy reading about but it seems that other people do otherwise it wouldn't be a trope and so many things came to my mind when I thought of workplace hatred obviously we've got Fifty Shades of Grey I don't think I should recommend that as a book though <laughs> but then we have the two that on my shelves stood out to me the first one being you had me you had me at Ola by Alexis Daria now this is kind of a Jane the Virgin-esque book between two actors that have to work on a telenovela together and first impressions aren't great but then from there when they have to practice their first kiss obviously romance flies need i say more and then the other one was the hating game with sally thorne um and this was just like a long-standing rivalry between two characters uh it's very kind of energetic and fun and competitive like competitive and it really stood out for fitting that trope so Lucy Hutton, baker of cakes, charming assistant and professional nice girl, is waging war. She's got the whole office on her side, except for tall, dark and charmless Joshua Templeman. He's been nothing but hostile since the moment they met and now it feels like nothing matters as much as taking him down. Trapped together under the fluorescent lights, they become entrenched in an addictive rivalry. There's a starting game, the mirror game, the HR game. Lucy can't let Joshua beat her at anything, especially when a huge promotion comes up for grabs. Finally, she's going to destroy the man she can't seem to get out of her office. The man she hates, the man who's taking up far too much space in her head. If Lucy wins, she'll be Joshua's boss. If she loses, she'll resign. The race is on, but the real games have only just begun. This was a really kind of quick-witted, funny book. It was filled with all of the innuendos and sarcasm, and it really just fits that workplace hatred vibe. 
The next trope that immediately came to mind because I read it in so many books is the enemy to lovers trope. And the first kind of books that came to mind was um, Book Lovers by Emily Henry, where we have Nora who has gone to Sunshine Falls with her sister Libby. And she comes across an old kind of colleague of hers, Char Charlie, who is an editor and they had a really horrible meeting. And from there, they're kind of, annoyances and hatred and sarcasm towards each other very quickly turns into love but i thought of a slow burn kind of enemies to lovers and that was red white and royal blue by casey mcquiston and i love this mainly because of you've got the us dynamic of the president and we've got the uk prince and i love that kind of difference that came together in this novel so we have when his mother became president of the United States, Alex Claremont Diaz was promptly classed as the American equivalent of a young royal. Handsome, charismatic, genius, his image is pure millennial marketing gold for the White House. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince, Henry, across the pond. And when the tabloids get a hold of a photo involving an Alex-Henry altercation, US-British relations take a turn for the worst. Heads of family and state and other handlers devise a plan for damage control. Stage a truce. When at first begins as fake, Instagrammable friendship grows deeper and more dangerous than either Alex or Henry could have imagined. Soon Alex finds himself hurtling into a secret romance with a surprisingly unstuffy Henry that could derail the presidential campaign and upend two nations. It raises the question, can love save the, save the world after all? Where do we find the courage and the power to be the people who we are meant to be? And how can we learn to let our true colors shine through? I loved this. It was a really funny read and you had the romance as well. And it really did fit the trope of enemies to lovers so well. I next thought of the trope of where characters have to go on an adventure together, a journey together, even though they hate each other and it brings them together. And I kind of thought of Crossroads, the film where Britney Spears and her group of gal pals go away, even though they hate each other and are in completely different cliques at school. And yet at the end of it, they're best buddies. Uh, but then I got to thinking of the journey and the adventure and how it kind of always seems to be a road trip in a car and if it and it often becomes a romantical thing and of course i thought of the road trip by beth o'leary now this is one of those books that is like a hallmark kind of book if hallmark did do books but it's like cozy but then you do have the realities of life that are sewed into the narrative so Addie and her sister are about to bark on an epic road trip to a friend's wedding in rural Scotland. The playlist is planned and the snacks are packed. But not long after setting off, a car slams into the back of theirs. The driver, the driver is none other than Addie's ex Dylan, who she's avoided since their traumatic breakup two years earlier. Dylan and his best mate are heading to the wedding too and they've totaled their car. So Addie has no choice but to offer them a ride. The car is soon jam packed full of luggage and secrets and with 400 miles ahead of them, Dylan and Addie can't avoid confronting the very messy history of their relationship. Will they make it to the wedding on time? And more importantly, is this really the end of the road for Addie and Dylan? So there you go, you've got this kind of beautiful love story that has been played with misery and then they're brought together on a journey and they have no other option but to face their demons last but by no means least i thought of the trope of the math sciencey girl that is kind of struggling with love she's focused on a science and mathy career as she should be may i point out feminism and female empowerment all the way um and she's focused on her sciencey maths career so she really has no time for love until it happens to stumble across her and first i thought of the kiss quotient but then i thought a bit harder and i came across the love hypothesis I need no introduction to this book. It's massive. It's pretty much in every bookshop you will go into. And it's such a fun read. 
When a fake relationship between scientists meets the incredible force of attraction, it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos. As a third year PhD candidate student, Olive Smith doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships, but her best friend does. And that's what got her into this situation. Convincing Anne that Olive is on her way to a happily ever after was always going to be tough. Scientists require proof. So like any self-respecting wo woman, Olive panics and kisses the first man she sees. I really enjoyed this book more than I thought I would. I'm not a big romance reader. So the fact that I got through this, I think in less than a day, is testament to the fact that it is a good book. Is it worth all the hype? Probably not, but it is very good, even though it does have a lot of cliches in it. And that kind of wraps up my trope book recommendation haul as it were i really hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like a comment and subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye